Hey guys, and welcome to the Dota 2 how-to guide for playing Bristleback. This is a short guide to give an overview on abilities and suggest some items, skill order, and general gameplay tips for playing Bristleback. So, to me, Bristleback is a great solo lane hero, though I wouldn't really call him anything else. He is generally capable when left on his own and can put up a good fight against pretty much anyone. He starts with 22 strength, 17 agi, and 14 in, and gains 2.2, 1.8, and 2.8 respectively. This means he's the only strength hero to my knowledge who gains more in than strength per level, meaning that his tiny starting mana pool is quickly resolved and he's more dependent on strength items than most, which really suits him perfectly. His first ability is Viscous Nasal Goo. This has a cast range of 600, meaning it's a fair distance, and it will slow the target by 20% on the first cast, plus an additional 3-12% to per cast afterwards, while also lowering armor by 1-2 to per stack with a max count of 4, meaning that Bristleback can slow a target by 32-68% to and lower their armor by 4-8. to with a duration of 5 seconds and a cooldown of only 1.5 seconds, it makes this skill so easy that you can just happily follow them throwing it on and those stacks will stay up at max all the time. The ability also has a tiny mana cost of only 30, meaning his high int gain really makes this spell spammable when it counts chasing down a carry or something. His second ability is Quill Spray, and this causes Bristle to fire quills out in all directions, and any enemy within a 625 radius of Bristle will be hit. This ability is physical damage, so can't be blocked by BKB or anything, and it will deal 20 to 80 base damage on the cast, plus a bonus damage of 30 for any previous stacks of quills that are on the target. This ability has a cooldown of 3 seconds, and quills have a memory or stay on the target for 14 seconds, meaning that purely by using this ability you can reach 120 damage that's bonus damage plus the 80 base damage per use which means 200 damage per cast, which for every 3 seconds that can be huge. However with the help of his third ability that we're about to discuss he can reach a lot higher. His third ability is Bristleback, which causes Bristle to take reduced damage if hit from the sides or back. With the reduced damage ranging from 16 to 40% from the back and 8 to 20% from the side. Which really is the skill that makes Bristle a great solo lane hero, as when he turns to run, he negates up to 40% of the damage, which is huge. Now, also along with that, every time Bristle takes 250 damage, he will automatically release a Quill Spray, which doesn't affect the cooldown or casting of his actual Quill Spray ability which is how you build up a lot more damage, and you can actually build up its capped at 400 bonus damage. This is bonus damage, not actual damage, which means you can do the additional 80, which means with this skill and his his uh, W, sorry, you can do up to 480 damage by casting Quills, which is massive. You do, however, to reach max stacks with this, have to take 2000 damage from behind, so... It's a lot of damage, but you're a strength hero, you should have a lot of health. His ultimate is a passive, which is Warpath. This causes Bristle to gain move speed and attack damage, with a bonus gain when he uses abilities, stacking up to 5 times. The base move speed gain is 5-10% to and base damage gain is 20-30%. to This is gained when Bristle first uses an ability. And then for every additional, he will gain 1 to 3 move speed and 20 to 30 damage. Meaning that with max stacks, your ult can provide you up to 150 bonus damage and 22% move speed. Which really helps in a fight because, well, you start hitting so hard and you've got such a strong potential to chase. It also helps with escaping with that massive, massive move speed buff. Item wise for Bristle, starting out with a Ring of Protection, Tango, Salves and 3 Ironwood Branches is a great way to start, and quickly progressing into a Stout Shield, Boots of Speed, Ring of Basilius, and Ring of Health. Now, this is another great thing about if you play in solo lane, you're near the secret shop so picking up that Ring of Health is very quick. Going on from that, you're going to want to head straight into Vanguard and Power Treads. 
And a cloak helps make you ultra tanky as it lowers the, well, lowers the damage that you receive from magic. And Pulse is calculated before any damage blocked by Vanguard, so you can actually lower the damage you actually take in that before quills go off, so it's great. You're gonna then want to work on getting a Heart of Tarrasque and an Assault Curus, and that's the main meat of your build. I mean, you're pretty damn hard to kill right there. Working next on Pipe of Insight or Shiva's Guard, with the possibility of swapping out the Shivas at the end for a Heaven's Halberd, which you can buy slightly earlier, depending on the situation. It's a great item for, well, my opinion anyway. I love Heaven's Halberd, it really kind of makes Bristle be able to go 1v1 versus an enemy carry and know that you can really beat them up. Skills wise, taking Viscous Nasal Goo at 4, 12, 13 and 14 with Quill Spray at 1, 3, 5 and 7 gives you a pretty solid early game slow with big damage output potential. Taking Bristleback at 2, 8, 9 and 10 with your ult whenever possible and stats when you have to. This build gives you good early game damage and a potential to last hit creep without moving in too close while also providing a great damage reduction and slow. General gameplay wise, block creep as much as possible when heading out to the lane and only last hit when you can do so safely. Using quills is a great way to harass but it will also push the lane so don't overuse it. It's also a great tool to last hit with from a good range if you don't feel safe moving up close to melee range. Bristle has one of the easiest attack animations in game to time last hits for so all around he's a great farmer and can play a little more aggressive than some heroes due to his reduced damage taken from his passive. Later in the game as you get vanguard you can start to move between the lanes a lot trying to gank. You've got a solid slow and you've got a lot of damage that you can output fairly quickly from quills. Now you're really going to want to focus on shutting down the enemy carry because with the slow you have and the quill damage you can really kind of lock down and chase a carry. So if you coordinate with your mid lane hero effectively you can kind of really kind of fight and mess them up. Looking into team fights you want to be at the front of your team using quills every three seconds so as soon as it's off cooldown. And you're going to want to turn your back to most of the team, so focus on one guy that's kind of at the edge of their team so that your back is on everyone else in the team fight. That is the ideal world really, because, well, if anyone else attacks you, you take reduced damage and start spraying more quills. Things to avoid. Bristle is not the most effective carry, as he's got a relatively buff Somebody Things to avoid. Bristle is not the most effective carry, as he has a relatively low attack speed, but he can be played as one. He really doesn't need a lot of damage items, as his ult kind of buffs him up a lot, and he's best to play tanky because, well, your ult gives you a lot of damage, so you can hit fairly hard and be tanky. So, I would say avoid playing him carry unless you absolutely kind of have to. Also, avoid getting blade mail on Bristle as this reflects damage you take back to the person. You take, however, 40% reduced damage if they hit you from behind, meaning that 40% of the damage that they've dealt has been negated and so isn't reflected back to them. It means Blade Mail essentially works out to be potentially 40% less effective than Bristle as it would be on another hero. Also, phase boots are quite a big thing to avoid as, well, you gain move speed by using abilities. Your abilities have a couple of seconds cooldown. Using abilities cancels the boost that you get from activating phase boots, which then means that if you want to use the phase boots thing, you can't spam abilities which give you move speed anyway. And so there's a bit of a problem there. So those are just a couple of things to avoid on Bristle, really. I hope you guys enjoyed the short guide for Bristleback, and I hope you found some useful info here. If you have, please remember to show some support by leaving a like or favorite, and if you have any comments about the guide, just leave a comment down below and I'll get back to you, and if you want more guides and Dota videos, feel 